Thank you. I do believe this is the very first TED chicken speaker. <laughs> anyway, when you see a chicken, what do you think? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Eggs, don't say, you know, she is a sentient, beautiful being. So I've heard a lot of chickens named Nuggets. <laughs> no, what, what, what comes to mind sometimes? Uh, dirty, comical, cartoons, just shout it out. Feathers, yeah, eggs, meat. Yeah. Well, we're, we're here to redefine, hopefully, what you think about chickens. And what we've got is the first slide. Employing local chickens as climate change activists. <laughs> it's no yoke. It's for real. <laughs> One of the things I'd like to do, too, is to introduce my co-presenter here. This is Oprah Henfrey. It's spelled H-E-N-F-R-E-E, -E -E, Oprah Henfrey. And we our goal is to have free hens in every yard around the world who wants them to help doing what we're going to talk about here today. She is a heritage chicken. She's full grown, she's adult, weighs two pounds. And isn't she beautiful? Look at, look at her feathers here. And if she's, she might let me show you her wings. No, she's, in fact, she's shaking a little bit. You okay? She's never been in the bright lights before. Did you know that when mother hens uh, have babies, little baby chicks, and the little baby chicks are upset, she will purr to them to calm them? And sometimes you can hear the flock in, in their coop purring, but let me see. If, See if that'll calm her. Yes, she did stop shivering a little bit. I, I feel better too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so th this is this is uh, what I'm proposing can actually be an actually act climate change activist, and the the, the goal is pretty simple. Uh, we, we, what I'm proposing is chickens with their skill sets and their manure can create mountains of compost and keep a lot of uh, methane out of the landfills. Um, about 30% of all the uh, trash in America could be composted in one form or another and of, of the household, of the, the household total trash, one third of that doesn't have to go to the landfill. And what's interesting is um, you, in this land, tr dumpster here, you can actually even see there's grass hanging out of the, the dumpster. The average American produces about 100, 212 pounds of food waste of, a, a year. That's over most people's weight in food, yard, and kitchen, kitchen waste. And that all could have been complete composted in one form or another. And what's interesting is how to recycle compostable trash? Well, you take, it's so easy. I mean, that's the thing, it's so easy. You take yard, yard waste, kitchen waste, leaf and garden waste, you put it in a pile, you add kitchen manure, you, you add the chicken manure, and you create compost. It's almost alchemical, it just, just happens. Um, that sequesters carbon dioxide, which is a global warming gas, and it keeps methane from forming out of the landfills. Now, this is one of the composters I made. It's so simple, this is just a, uh, pallet composter, five pallets screwed together with some, some uh, screws, and that's it. You don't even have to buy a composter. You can, you can have them already, already made. Um, this is a composter bin that was in my yard, and it was interesting when I, I would take the f kitchen scraps down, literally I'd feel like the Pied Piper because my flock would be right behind me because they knew I might drop some or leave some for them. When I'd put them in the top of the bin, then they'd start feeding. And all I had to do is lift that little lid in the front, and they'd, they'd be like little backhoes. They'd just start pulling it out and eating and scratching, eating, scratching, spreading it out. And so then if I wanted to put it back to compost further, they could be, they, I just put it back in the compost pile. And if you want to just do really simple in ground, you don't want to mess with the food scraps, you can just put a trash can in the ground and uh, open the lid, put it in, close it, and then pull the bottomless trash can up, and you don't even have to do anything with it. It just happens. Compost happens. Now, what's interesting is um, how much compostable weight for 100,000 people? What's, what's interesting is 100,000 people is uh, the average county size in America. Like Wayne County has, doesn't have quite that much, but some, some counties have over a million. So if, if you take the 212 pounds per person times 100,000 people, 
And by gosh, you, you come up with 10,600 10, tons. And that's over, t over uh, uh, 21 million pounds. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now, let's put some dollar value to this. How does that mount? Well, if you take the average cost of, the resi of residential tipping fee, the collection and the tipping fees come to about $195 per ton. You just simply take that times 106, uh, what, 10,600 tons, and that comes over $2 million. So it mounts up quite pretty, pretty, pretty quickly. What if just 10% of the households? I mean, not everyone's going to have chickens and not everyone's going to compost, but what if just 10% of them did? Well, e even if that small amount did, an uh, average county could save $206,000 from their taxpayer dollars. Or if 5%, you could save over 100000 And the thing is, it's so simple and, and easy to do. Um, I've got three examples of people that have done this in the US. The first is the city of Diest. It's in Belgium. And they, they've been using this plan for quite a long time, or at least a decade. The second is Austin, Texas. And the third is Burlington, Vermont. So in, in the city of Diest, the, they had a line item in their budget to buy hens, laying hens, and give to uh, households. They, bought, they gave three hens to over 2,000 households. And they didn't do it for eggs or for meat or for anything other than, they didn't even do it to compost or create topsoil. They did specifically to decrease the amount of trash. They had to pick up and haul away. And instead, all that just remained in the backyards. They didn't have to go, go anywhere. In Austin, Texas, um, they have a program of, um, of giving uh, free composting classes and free chicken keeping classes. They have a goal of, of zero waste by 2020. And in zero waste systems, there's no waste. Everything becomes residuals, is what they call them. Residuals to transform into one thing or into another. So, so they've got, um, they also give rebates, $75 rebates to, to buy coops and to buy composters. And they're doing very successfully with their composting. And again, that saves them. Austin's a pretty big city. That saves them quite a bit. The Vermont Compost Company is a long-term friend of mine. They take residuals from any, any restaurant, the prison, the, the hospital, schools, any place that has enough food residuals, they'll, they'll make a stop by and pick them up. And what they did is they have, um, they diverted in 2019 2,000 tons, 2,000 tons of waste diverted, and they converted that into 15,000 cubic yards of compost and topsoil. Now that's, that's creating and sequestering a lot of carbon with them. Here's a picture of them picking up uh, food residuals. This is the truck that goes around. Those are the, the uh, totes that they use to, to put, they leave one of those um, totes at every place that, where they do a pickup and they just scrape off the plates and put it directly in, into that tote. Here's what looking into one and you might think, oh God, that's so gross. There's, there's, there's meat, there's, there's chicken in there, there, there's all kinds of different scratches. And most people go, oh, that's gross. But if you're a chicken or, or microbes in the soil to create that, you're going, whoa, it's a banquet. It's a total feast. So here's these totes are being delivered now by, at the uh, Vermont Compost Company. Yeah, I know, she's getting hungry. <laughs> and notice what's coming up to greet that truck as they dump off those totes in the back. There are chickens there. Now they don't leave that, that, those food residuals just on the ground. They'll bring a front end loader up and they cover it over. If you just left it, it'd be like a landfill. It would stink. It would just smell really badly. But no, they cover it over and they, they literally create mountains and mountains of compost. And here's one of their mountains of compost. Notice the chickens on top? They employ over a thousand working chickens. And what they do is they're aerating the, the compost they're pulling the mountain down, uh, cleaning it as they go. They're feeding off of it. They're enhancing the, the compost with their feathers and manure. Um, and I was there on a really hot, hot July day, and there was not one single smell of anything that stunk. Nothing like that at all. Uh, it just smelled like good, healthy, healthy topsoil. You doing all right? Let me see if she'll give me her feathers now. Oh, she's more relaxed. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? She is a designer chicken. <laughs> Notice she has feathered feet as well. And then look at that bum. <laughs> you think she could work as hard as those chickens at the Vermont Compost Company? 
Yes, she can. It's not just about, just about size, because what they do is they scratch and peck and scratch and peck, and you get a thousand chickens scratching and pecking, and you're, you're uh, literally bringing down mountains of compost. Here's a little close-up of them doing their work. You can see they're literally digging in bunkers. I mean, they are in there scratching out. You can see, uh, you can see them beat the food bits. Um, and literally, this is exactly the same process that happens in your home compost pile. They get in there, and they're scratching, they're pecking, they're pulling it out, they're, they're aerating it, they're eating the bugs and whatever else might be wiggly crawly. And the Vermont Compost Company doesn't buy any bags of feed. <coughs> If those birds don't eat, I mean, they have some supplements available, but literally, take a good look at those birds. Do they look like they're wanting in any way? They're out there 24-7 working on that compost pile. It's quite remarkable. As, a, as an unintended consequence, the, um, those chickens produce about a thousand dozen eggs a month. I mean, they, the compo again, the compost company would keep it. Uh, the chickens, because they're worth you know, four tons of fuel-free equipment, but they produce a thousand dozen eggs a month without, without hardly any feed input. So they've met their local egg shed, which means you know, there's, there's food that's produced literally a yard away. And the Vermont Compost Company is located on five hilly acres. Its address is Main Street, and it's in Montpelier, the state capital of Vermont. Five acres, hilly acres, state capital of Vermont. Yeah. So that's, that's they, they, they're creating a lot of food there. So the other thing that's important about employing chickens, it is so scalable. It can be done at any level, whether it's just a, a tiny little pile that you have or it's a whole compost company that you have. You can do it on, on just about, about every level. Yeah. It's socially responsible, economically sustainable, environmentally sensible. I mean. Personally, I know I'm biased a little bit, but I see absolutely no downside to employing chickens locally to create the create, create topsoil and sequester carbon. The um, advantages to the community are huge. I mean, they can save really big taxpayer dollars, um, builds garden soil, free chicken feed, and you get locally produced eggs. You know, it takes about 55 gallons of water an egg to produce commercially produced eggs. 55 gallons of water per egg. Whereas the ones that come from your backyard, it doesn't, doesn't take hardly, hardly any of that. So the global advantages to uh, chickens with uh, employing chickens as climate change activists, it builds climate resiliency because it, it sequesters the carbon, keeps the methane out of the landfills, and it really enhances the carbon sponge. Has anyone heard of the carbon, carbon sponge? There's a, there's a plan to rehydrate California because their carbon sponge has gone dry. When you get enough topsoil, it'll keep the water in, the, in it, and that can actually resist drought and, uh, and hold, hold water. Um, and decrease erosion. You know, we have erosion in the world that Dr. David Pemintel estimates is equal to losing about the size of Indiana every year in topsoil. We're losing our topsoil. And did, did you know that if there's only about two inches between us and starvation, if the oil stops and we don't have those agricultural inputs of fertilizers and, and um, uh, insecticides and herbicides, which are all come from oil, if the oil stops, our food supply stops. So the more topsoil we can build on the planet, the more uh, climate resistance we'll have and the more we'll be able to feed ourselves um, good, good food. Jared Diamond, in his book Collapse, he also wrote Guns, Germs, and Steel, uh, two excellent books. But he went around the world and he looked at uh, different cultures and tried to understand why certain ones collapsed and why the others succeed. He looked at eight ancient cultures across the world, and including a, a modern farm in Montana. He came up with eight reasons why societies collapsed or thrived. And what were the top two reasons? You know, what are they? Water and topsoil. And a third reason was poverty. So here's the model. This is the whole summary of the whole thing, and it's so simple. With a conventional trash system, everything goes into the landfill. And you have to pick it up, haul it, transport, tipping fees, management, all, all that stuff, sometimes for decades with these landfills. But with family flocks and composting, it never leaves the yard. It stays in the backyard, you create topsoil, and you pre prevent uh, the, the trash pickup, the, the, the trash <laughs> mountains of, of um, landfills and the methane sequestering. 
So there's an ancient poultry proverb that says if you give, give, a, give a person an egg, they can have an omelet. But if you give them a family flock, they can have eggs and omelets for a lifetime. <laughs> for a lifetime. And I love the parable of the, the mustard seed. Does everyone know that parable? That faith, as tiny as a mustard seed, can move mountains? And what I'm saying here is literally something as tiny as chickens can build mountains of topsoil and keep mountains of, comp of uh, trash out of the landfills and with all the advantages to it. So I'd like you to just close your eyes for just a minute, having met Oprah here. And when you open them and you see this chicken, what do you think of now? Anybody? Just compost, social worker, uh, carbon creator, carbon sequester, beautiful. I want you to know she is also a qualified therapy chicken. We have, we have, we have chickens now that go and give comfort and relief, for real. That's no yoke either. <laughs> and she's done it. Okay. So here's what I want to really have you ask yourself, is ask not what chickens can do for you, but what you can do with chickens. Let's give it up for our feathered friends here. And thank you all so very, very much. May the flock be with you evermore. Thank you.